We have traveled all over Kenya to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the help they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and increase profits. We'll see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our expert advice and learn from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepa. Today we are in Kitui and we are visiting the Wambua family. They are very keen maize farmers and today we want to make sure they get even bigger harvests. And at the same time help them out in the house as well. Mm -hmm. Now Karo, it looks like rain and uh, I suggest we draw straws to see who's going to work comfortably in the house or out here in the field. Okay, there, there you are. Alright, my turn. Uh-huh. <laughs> I told you! Huh? Tough luck, Tony. Tough luck! Alright. Hmm? <laughs> okay, welcome and let's find out what this means for Tony today on Shamba Shepherd. We are visiting farmers Mbula and Agnes Wambua and their daughter Purity who has a lovely daughter of her own, Zambi. Mr. Wambua, yes. how are you? Oh, how are you? Yes. And how are you, Purity? We are here. Nice to be here. Mm -hmm. Show us around your shamba. Yes. All right. Oh, it's this way. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. 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 Mbula has a lovely farm. There are the goats. I see there's a big wood store for the jiko. Maize just coming up. So I wonder how we can help our farmers. That is very good work, Tony. Very good mm -hmm. work. Very impressive, Shamba. Mm -hmm. Purity, huh? what challenges are you facing in the home? We cook using firewood. Ah. A lot of smoking. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mr. Wambua, Nam? how can Shamba Shape Up help you? I need him supporting me. Maize and seeds. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> well, we are here. Shamba Shape Up is here. Caro? Yes, and we did not come alone. We came with experts who are going to give you information and uh, do a bit of uh, upgrade here and there yes. to make sure that you're fully shaped up. Yes, and you've got one day, so let's get to work. Let's Caro. get to work. All right. See you later. We'll see you later. Mm. Okay. It's time to pitch the tent and get ready for work. Well, Caro, it's raining. Oh, yes. Yeah, good. Now, you ready for work? Oh, yes, Tony. You know, I don't mind working out in the rain, but uh, come to think of it, you lost. So, you're working out in the field. Well, I don't mind working out in the field. Bring in the rain, bring in the sun. I'm ready to work. We have an expert who's going to teach us all about conservation agriculture. And an expert who will tell us all about solar lighting. So first, I'm going to work on planting the maize. And I'm going to find out how to improve the kitchen. Well, see you later, Carol. Later. But our first task is taking a soil sample and sending it to the crop nuts lab for analysis. It's vital before doing any kind of work growing crops on the farm, you should first find out the condition of the soil. Then you know what fertilizers you need to use and whether the soil needs liming. And we are in luck. The soil test results have arrived. We have tested Mbula's maize field. And it seems it's very low in nitrogen. As well as using a balanced fertilizer, Mbula will need to add ammonium sulfate at planting and urea at top dressing. Time to find our farmers and pass on the news. And here's our first expert, Martin from Seedco. Mbula has planted two fields of maize one field has seed cores Duma 43 variety, and this field has a local traditional variety. Bula is already getting a good yield from Duma 43, but he wants to know if this is the best variety for this dry land area, and to see if our expert can help him do even better. Martin, very nice to find you here inspecting, yeah. and as you can see, unpredictable weather, one minute is raining, but rains are blessings, blessings aren't they? Yeah. Yes. Good, now tell me, what maize variety is this that you've planted here? I'm planted in cucumber maize. Cucumber maize? Yes. Yeah. Cucumber maize is which one, the traditional? It's just the traditional uh -huh. yeah, varieties, yeah. And is there another maize variety that you've planted somewhere else? Yeah. Which one is this? 
Duma 43. Duma 43? Yeah. Tell us, Martin, yes. what is Duma 43? Yes, Duma 43 is one of main hybrid variety we have in Sidico. That is growing in marginal areas where rains are just erratic, like the place we are now. Uh -huh. yes. Which means you have other varieties. We've got other varieties suitable for uh, different uh, localities in Kenya. For example, if you go to Mount Kenya, you'll find Twiga that is suitable for mountainous areas. If you go to Rift Valley, there is Simba 61. It's also suitable for that place. If you go to um, coffee growing zones, you'll find Punda Milea. Now, comparing the harvests, Mr. Wambua, when you look at this traditional, you call it the Kamba mm -hmm. and Duma. Did you see any difference? Yes. What was the difference? Duma is uh, better than this another one. Mm -hmm. So Duma is perfect for here. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about suitability of Duma yeah. in this region. Why is it suitable? One is a drought tolerant variety. It takes 90 days to maturity and actually is very resistant to various diseases. Duma 43 in dry heat areas does fantastic. Wow, there we go. I said it. I said yeah. it's going to rain. Yeah. Unpredictable weather. But those are blessings. Those are blessings. <laughs> okay, now let's go to good agricultural practice when yeah. Yeah. planting Duma. Yeah. What should a farmer do? One thing, once you get to the end stockist, make sure you get certified seed. For example, if you get my Duma 43, inside we've got an insurance card. Actually, it's a, we call it a replanting guarantee insurance. So if it does not rain for 21 days, the amount of money the farmer has used to purchase that seed uh. will, will just get back through Mpesa. Wow! So, buying seeds from Sidco means Bula has money back guarantee if there are no rains. That's great. But are there any special planting requirements for Duma 43 in this dry land area? We had to wait for wider spacing of 90 centimeters by 30 centimeters. 90 is from one row to the other, it's 90 centimeters, and from one plant to the other, 30 centimeters. Remember, if you're planting dry land areas, give maize more room to grow and get a bigger harvest as a result. Now, let, let's go to the harvest. Yes. How much should a farmer expect from one acre using Duma 43? You'll get 28 to 32 bucks of 90 kilos in one acre. Would you want to achieve that? Yes, I want that. <laughs> okay. Is there another variety mm. that the farmer can use here? Yes, actually in Sidico we've come up with a 300 series known as Sungura 301. Duma 43 takes 90 days to maturity. Uh, Sungura 301 will take you 75 days to maturity. So, two weeks before the farmer has food. Well, you've heard from the expert, uh, Seedco has got seeds that are suitable to your own area. And look out, coming up soon, Sungura 301. While Tony was dodging the rain outside, I was pleased to go inside and meet Purity, Agnes and Bula's eldest daughter. Purity helps Agnes out sharing the cooking duties. But a three stone fire is smoky and uses a lot of fuel. So I've invited Georgina from EcoZoom to come and meet her. I'm keen to introduce Purity to the benefits of using a modern Jiko like the EcoZoom. So Purity, maybe if you can tell us briefly, what do you use for cooking? I can see firewood. Mm. Do you use anything else? No, I use only firewood. Firewood. Uh -huh. Is it expensive? Yes, it's just uh, expensive because uh, when I want to get that mm, mm, firewood, yeah. I buy mm, one tree for uh, 1,000. 1,000? Yeah. That's very expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From those firewoods, mm -hmm. uh, when I put this on the jiko, mm -hmm. it gives us a smoking, a lot of smoking, mm -hmm. and is affecting our health. Yeah. And uh, this is the only ventilation? Yes. One window. Uh -huh. So sometimes when you're cooking, the your, your siblings are here, your sisters, yeah. sometimes your brothers. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Georgina? Yeah. This jiko that you use daily, uh -huh. you have to use it from morning till evening for preparing your meals. Mm -hmm. By the end of the day, you are equivalent uh -huh. to somebody who smokes two packets of cigarettes in uh -huh. a day. What? Yes. Uh -huh. Two mm, packets of cigarettes. That's why you will always cough. Mm. Your kids have problems mm. because of the lungs mm. due to the mm. three stone jiko. Mm. We have improved jikos. The EcoZoom Dura, mm. you can improve this kitchen. Mm. You will only use 
very little firewood. Uh -huh. You say you use you so buy a tree for a thousand. Mm. A thousand goes for how long? One month. One month. Mm. Calculate one thousand mm. by one year. Hmm. That's twelve thousand. Mm -hmm. So when you buy the Eco Zoom Dura, you'll only use three three logs like this one, small mm. ones. Mm. They can mm. prepare a whole meal. Mm. So by the end of the day, day you'll find that one tree that costs you a thousand shillings, mm. you can use that tree for a whole year mm. for firewood. Oh, one tree, good. only a thousand shillings. Wow. So those savings, you will buy milk, make good tea for your children, mm. and they'll grow healthy. Uh, do you think the one window that they have for ventilation is enough? No, no, no. What should they do? Uh, the one window you have, it's mm. very small. Mm -hmm. You should have a bigger window so the smoke doesn't affect you. So, mm. Carol, these utensils, we need some shelves to put them up. They need to be hung up because yes. I can even see the chicken yeah. coming in and out. Uh, we, we'll let the Shamba Shepherd team come in and mm. do their magic. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. And uh, we see whether, after you bring in the Jiko, how the kitchen is going to look. Okay? Oh, All right. Okay. okay. So, Caris and our Shamba Shepherd team got straight to work shaping up the kitchen. He's making the window much bigger and adding some shelves to keep everything clean. While we wait for the work to finish, let's join Tony and find out about our farmer's top tip. Mr. Ambua, now, where is this uh, firewood from? Pigeon peas. Pigeon peas? Yes. Wow. And what are you eating there? Pigeon peas, I can eat it. You're eating pigeon peas and yes. the firewood is from pigeon peas? Yes. Is it delicious? Yeah. Wow. I mm, can see you enjoying yourself. Well, you've heard from Isombua, pigeon peas are the best crop in this region. And you can get a good, good harvest. They're delicious too. Wow. What a great tip. And talking of firewood, I wonder how Carol's getting on in the kitchen. Well, Tony, the kitchen is almost finished. So, Georgina has started lighting the new Jiko. In just a few minutes, it's going to be ready. So, let's find Purity and see what she thinks of her new kitchen. Ah, ah very smart. <laughs> <laughs> smart, smart. <laughs> Can you believe this is the kitchen? Yes. Mm. Mm. The shelf looking all clean, mm. organized. The window. Ah, mm. so you'll, you'll highly recommend this yeah. kind of yeah. window. Yeah. It's actually bigger than the one this that was here. Right mm. window. All right, and uh, I can see there's mm. something cooking yes. on the jiko. Cooking the kizari here. Yeah. Huh? Mm. And there's no smoke. Georgina, mm. tell us the secret about this jiko. Mm. Okay, this is the EcoZoom Dura. Health-wise, yes. it's good. Mm. The advantage of this jiko is that it will use very little firewood mm -hmm. compared to the other jiko, mm. the three-stone jiko. Mm. Then it has the silicon handles these ones mm -hmm. so you can lift it like you can see i'm holding it mm -hmm. and it's on fire Trinity, just just try it, it doesn't burn mm. it doesn't burn my fingers is it hot no, it, then it we have this metal here it's a very special metal mm -hmm. it's called the cast iron very good conductor of heat okay so this one also helps in speeding up the cooking the chico cost you can buy the jikos from our uh, EcoZoom shops. Mm -hmm. We have EcoZoom agents. Mm -hmm. We also have Equity Bank. Mm -hmm. You can get them as a loan. How exactly do you go about that? Okay, we have equity groups. Mm -hmm. When you enroll in one of those equity community groups, mm -hmm. you'll get the jiko there as a loan. Yeah, right. You'll be paying uh, for a duration of eight months. What mm -hmm. happens when it gets spoiled? We have a guarantee, a one-year guarantee mm -hmm. for the Dura. Mm -hmm. So if anything goes wrong with the jiko mm. maybe the cast iron mm. breaks down these handles silicon handles mm. one of your sons mm. open it the screw is lost we can replace that mm. for free mm. wow then after one year mm. we can replace at a fee a very small fee well that's it i think purity is going to be loving her new kitchen no more coughing from the smoke and saving money on fuel too coming up after the break delight Green flies to the whole family. And the proof that conservation agriculture really works. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. 
We are in Kitui and we are visiting Agnes and Mbula. We have some great tips on growing maize and seeing the benefits of using an improved jiko. But we also want to find out about conservation agriculture and solar lights. And Cairo, I'm ready to go back to work in the rains. I am not worried about the rains. Ah. Bring them on. <laughs> and I'm going back to the house. Keeping dry. See you later. Our next expert is Daniel from Simit. He's here to talk about conservation agriculture. And he's going to show Mbula what difference conservation agriculture can make by comparing soil from the middle of the field where it has been ploughed with soil from the edge of the field where it has been left alone. I hope he believes him. Daniel is a pastor as well as an agricultural expert. Yes, we are talking a bit about soil. So you can look at this soil. Yeah which is having some microorganisms, you know, it's having a lot of humus, uh, having a lot of moisture, quite dumb, warm, yeah. you know, it's good. Let's compare that one with what we have here. Now, these are the soils that are on exposed field. You can see the difference. So, this has big particles which are sandy. Mm -hmm. This is too dry. This doesn't have any organisms in it. And you can see that this is sandy while this is loamy. Wow. And definitely, you know, the soil uh, that is good for agriculture, mm -hmm. it is the one that is loamy, that, that has some uh, humors, that is a little bit uh, looks healthy mm -hmm. than this one. So how can our farmer, Miss Ambua, get from this to this? Ah, conservation agriculture. So what is conservation agriculture, Daniel? Conservation agriculture, a very important way of farming that affects all farms. It is about minimum tillage, it's about covering the soil, and it's about crop associations, ensuring that you have at least uh, more than one crop on your field. So, the first principle of conservation agriculture is minimum tillage. Now, when you talk about minimum tillage, mm -hmm. we are talking about reducing the amount of turning of the soil. When you are planting, don't turn the soil too much. Like, for example, I saw that you are using the ox plow. The ox plow turns the soil, which was the, the soil which was on top, which is more fertile, it makes it to go down there where the roots of the plant cannot reach. So that is one way in which you are doing too much turning of the soil. We are talking about ensuring that you only till where you are going to place your seed. For example, you can use a djembe. Just remove the soil where you are going to place your seed and then you cover the seed. The other areas you can use either herbicides to kill the weeds or you can even uproot if at all you are talking about a, a small plot of land. In places where you have like your farm which is so wide and big, you can use something we call a reaper. It is drawn by an ox, but then it doesn't plow, it only cuts. And then you plant now where the, the reaper has cut the, uh, the soil for your planting. The second principle is leaving the crop residue on the field. When you cover the soil, you are ensuring that the little moisture that is falling on that soil is conserved. Such that now, you cover the soil, it is not hit directly by the sun rays. So the, the little moisture that is there stays within that soil. When you do that, you are also ensuring that even the microorganisms that are in that soil, they are having good condition. The environment is conducive for them to burrow, to, to move around in the soil so that there can be that uh, soil aeration. And number three, you are inhibiting the weeds when you cover that soil. How do you cover the soil? You put the remains of the plants that were there before. For example, if at all it's maize, after you have harvested, ensure that the stalks, you use it to cover the soil. Or you can even use grass, you can use twigs, you can use even leaves of trees and you cover that soil so well such that now the, the sun's rays do not hit the soil directly. That is called mulching. And the third principle is crop rotation and intercropping. Now, there are crops that benefit each other. For example, leguminous crops benefit grains. Grains, we are talking about maize, millet, sorghum, they need a lot of nitrogen. And the leguminous crops like, like cowpea, like pigeon peas, like beans, they produce, they, they are able to convert nitrogen from the air or from the atmosphere and put it in the soil through a process known as nitrogen fixation. And now when, the, when this happens, it means that if you plant beans and maize, 
then there is that relationship that that happens where the beans uh, fix nitrogen for the maize so the maize will benefit another way of doing it is crop rotation ensuring that after you plant maize you can plant a leguminous crop what does that help there are pests that affect maize like stock borers they don't affect the beans so when you place beans in a place that originally you had planted maize you are allowing time for the stock borers and those pests that affect maize to die such that when you come now and plant maize again you will have a plot that doesn't have so many of those pests that are remaining in the soil that does not have so many of those weeds that are remaining in the soil and what that means is that you have a healthy crop wow mr abua you've heard from the experts are you going to try conservation agriculture in Yashamba? Yes, I want to try. Definitely, this is the best region to practice conservation agriculture. It's a cost-saving and, and also yield-increasing way of farming. Thank you. So remember, conservation agriculture is cost-effective, very beneficial, and in long term, you're going to get bumper-bumper harvests. And now for our final expert today. I've invited Oliver from Delight to meet Agnes and her daughter Purity. We've helped the family out in the kitchen and now it's time to shape up their living spaces with the Delight D30 solar home system. So Purity, what have you been using for lighting? Small solar, mm -hmm. which is half a wall bulb. Mm -hmm. It's not a give us enough light. The light is so yeah. limited. And you have siblings who are in school? Yes. Uh -huh. So how do they do their homework if you only have this one solar lamp? They use that one bulb because mm -hmm. um, there is no another way, another way to do. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's quite a problem. Yes. So, Oliver, yes. what do you have for us? Uh, I have the Delight Solar Home System. Uh, it's a, a solar product that I know that is going to change uh, Purity and Agnes's life and mm -hmm. their children forever. Uh, it has a, a solar panel. They'll never have to do anything on it. Just put it outside in the sun. You know, Kambani is uh, blessed with sun, okay. and that's free energy for them. It will get the rays from the sun, and it will charge the unit. Purity, that's a number one plus. Free sunlight. This unit has the battery inside, which will store all the energy from the sunlight. Okay. It also comes with a, with a light. It has three of them. That uh, goes into the system here, and you switch it on it has two modes the first mode will take you eight hours the second mode will take you six hours then you switch it off uh, yeah? so if it is dim it will take longer yes like you can use it for long that yes is. okay the charging unit also has extra ports that you can add more lamps mm. on it mm. we also have a torch yes. that you can use at night when you're going uh, to the to the to check on the animals mm. it's very bright it has two modes yes. uh, a dim mode and a bright mode mm. And it also charges with the with the unit. Yeah. What you do, the smallest pin, you put it inside here and into the unit. You can charge a phone with this also, okay. with the same unit. Uh -huh. uh, does anyone have a phone? Uh, with this, you can. It has five different uh, pins for charging the phone. You just choose which which is your model, and you plug it inside, and it will charge. Ah. Uh -huh. So that one you can actually see it. Yes, charging. it's charging. Okay. Also, it comes with a, with a radio. Wow. Uh, Purity, yes. what radio have you been using? We use a radio using batteries. It uses batteries. Yeah. How many batteries do you use? Two. Two. Mm -hmm. How much do they cost? 45 each. So times two, that is 90. Mm. You've been suffering, uh -huh. but we are here to help you out. Mm -hmm. This is a solar charged uh, radio, mm -hmm. and you'll never get to buy any battery. All you just need to do is charge it with the energy of this. It will charge. Ah. Yeah. So you keep it on the charge for a day, and you can use it like for two days, three days, and you save your 90 shillings. Well, time for one more job for Caris and our Shamba Shepa crew. Let's get the solar lighting system installed and ready to go before it's dark. The solar panel goes on the roof. The charger point for the phone, radio, and torch can go on the wall. Lights hanging from the ceiling, switches for easy operation and we are done another happy farmer and that's our work finished for today another shamba shipped up time to look for another farm see you next week on shamba, shamba shepherd, shepherd.